It's time to bring you sports here on News Prime. And we begin from the camp of the Black Queens, where Iceland based, based defender Linda Ishon um, arrived in Ghana last week and has joined her colleagues at the Ghana Man Soccer Center of Excellence as they continue preparations for the women's AFCON next month. The Grindavik FC defender is optimistic Ghana is capable of achieving the host and win agenda. You're an experienced player. I don't think you were moved by the countries you saw. No, I'm not moved at all because I've met, uh, I think, almost all the teams. So I'm not moved by any, like, any threat or any scared or something. So you think your team is ready for November 17th to kickstart? Yeah, very sure. We are very, very ready for the game. You, you have joined them after they have started training. Since you joined, you think training and everything is going on well? Any change from the last time you came? But I just joined today, so I am not trained with the team yet. So we will see on Monday how the team is, uh, the shape of the team, and how that, uh, how everything is going to be. There are some new faces, obviously you have, you have come to see. You think that gelling for this tournament will be that quick? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, yeah, I think everything will be fine. Host and we now we doing it for for sure. We are going to do host and we. Optimism brewing in the camp of the Black Queens ahead of the 2018 Women's AFCON kick starting on the 17th of November here in Accra. Let's uh, get into other issues regarding Ghana football. And former spokesperson of the Ghana Football Association, Randy Abbey, has lauded the Normalization Committee's decision for Ghanaian clubs to withdraw from CAF club competitions and also praised the consensus reached by clubs not to participate in the CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederations Cup. Yes, I think there was a general consensus that, look, there are fundamental and germane issues that we ought to um, avert our minds to and expend our energies on. There's a lot to do. I mean, issues of Africa, I mean, bluntly speaking, we're not part of the top 12 yeah. with four slots. Yeah. And so the question you ask is, uh, what does participating in Africa, uh, what gains does that give us? If we do not participate in Africa, what do we lose? I mean, those are two fundamental questions you ask yourself. So, for example, if you were part of the top 12, you're talking about some, you're, you're talking about your four slots, yeah. and perhaps the fact that if you do not uh, participate, uh, you could lose the two slots. But we were part of the top 12. We had the four slots. We lost them, not because we're not participating in Africa, but because our performance had dipped, and it's continued dipping, you know. And so we, we don't just go to Africa for the sake of it. Look, there are critical things that we need to resolve in terms of what is the status of the competitions that were halted, um, what do we do with respect to the football calendar, how do we move forward. If we're going to move forward with um, the league next year, what happens in the vacuum, in that transition? There are key issues that we need to resolve. There are issues with uh, refereeing, there are issues with sponsorship, there are issues with, with um, uh, football licensing and all that. And so. There are things that we need to focus our minds and work on and not just think of going to Africa just to add up to the numbers. That's what we've been doing, I mean, the last five, six or seven years, you know. And so, uh, really, what we're doing now at this stage, I mean, there are quite a number who believe that we need to go to an extraordinary Congress for Congress to pronounce on the status of the league, you know, to avert any legal issues and all that. There's also a school of thought that believes that the normalization committee as an executive committee is um, clothed with the powers to take the decision and report to the next Congress. So I think some advice will be taken and whichever the direction will have finality with respect to the status of the competitions that were halted. And then once we've come to that decision, the question we ask ourselves is if, for example, the decision is that we're halting, we're not moving forward, when do we expect the next football season to start? If we make that determination, what happens between now and then? Because we cannot continue uh, uh, or we cannot stay without the business of football. So we need to create something for that vacuum. That is if uh, the decision is that, look, that is it. Let's look forward to next season. And then we need to look at all. Randy Abbey is a former spokesperson for the Ghana Football Association. Our president of the Normalization Committee, Dr. Kofi Amos, says one of his outfit's commitments is to be fully dedicated to the job at hand and believes Ghana football has the potential of supporting the Ghanaian economy. We must all refocus on the task at hand and, like brothers and sisters, join hands and do something important for, for Ghana. 
you know, football can become a big um, leg of the Kenyan economy to employ people and pay them high, high wages, you know. And also, our young people who dream about becoming a Ronaldo, the magic of dribbling the ball and all of that, they have a place to go, you know. So I think it's something important, and that's why me and my colleagues, we are sacrificing our time to come in and help. And we hope that people in football and the whole general citizen of Ghana will, will understand that together we must all do this and with love, then Ghana will rise again and hey, Ghana will conquer. Hey, if it's not challenging, it's not worth doing. I, I, I like challenges, you know. Um, but it's also exciting uh, to be called upon or your nation to call you that we have one problem here, we think you can help us. I think it's an honor and I'm happy to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Really Let's get updates from games ongoing in the UEFA Champions League. There were um, one or two early kickoffs, and um, we get to check out how all of that ended. But I'm currently going on at Old Trafford. There's uh, Manchester United up against Juventus, who have got Cristiano Ronaldo making a return to, um, you know, where he really made his name, and um, that's Manchester United. And Juve currently lead by a goal um, to nil. So earlier in the day, Bayern Munich beat AK Athens by two goals to nil. 69 minutes of the action done between Ajax and Benfica. It's goalless um, in Holland. 67 minutes of the game done in Germany between Hoffenheim and Lyon. Hoffenheim down by two goals to three against the French outfit. And Shakhtar Donetsk down by two goals to nil against Manchester City. Real Madrid respite for them and Hulen Lopetegui as they lead Victoria Pleasant by two goals to nil. Roma running run riot um, against Cheska Moscow, three goals to nil. It currently stands. And um, Young Boys also um, full time, drawing 1 1 against Valencia. And 69 minutes of the action done between Manchester United and Juventus with Juve, leading by a goal to nil at Old Trafford. And Manchester City, um, just as I was um, going through the update, have increased their lead, three goals to nil. It stands at the moment. So Shakhtar Donetsk nil. Manchester City 3. Let's wrap it up with some tennis news. And Kane Ishikori defeated Francis um, Tafo in the first round of the Estebank 500. And that's your sports. My name is Hans Mensah Andor.